In this tutorial we're going to look at how we produce patterns like this fluted column. So this uh, is a very common motif that you find on mantelpieces or fireplaces or parts of furniture uh, and it's a very efficient way of producing these sort of uh, fluted shapes which is to use a large ball nose tool and then to gradually dip the tool in, run it along the length of the groove and then retract it on a curve again to lead these fluted uh, uh, head and tail to each of our passes and that we have a special toolpath strategy specifically for this called the fluting strategy and it means that you can simply in your 2D view if we look at the artwork used to generate this uh, panel uh, you can simply use lines to determine where you want your flutes to go so let's go back to the beginning now and see how we created this file so I'm going to close this one down and we're going to create an entirely new file and we're going to make it 36 inches long uh, by 6 inches high uh, and we're going to make it about one and a half inches thick material. We don't want an offset, we want it in the bottom left hand corner as our origin for the uh, machining datum and that's our basic uh, outline of our material block here. So the first thing is we want to draw in the lines that we're going to use as the um, paths for our fluting toolpath. And we're going to do that using uh, sort of the polyline tool, but unlike some of the examples that you'll see in other tutorials, we're going to do this very precisely. So we're going to use the actual um, form for the Create Polyline tool to place all of our points um, with uh, complete precision. So what I want to do is start with my first point, and my first point I want to be in uh, 4 inches from the end here in X, so I'm going to put in 4 inches, and then 1.5 and inches up from the origin in Y, so if I put in 1.5 there, and then we can add our first point, and as I come across here you can see I've now got the first point with um, the interface offering us the option to add the next point. Now we can do that in several ways. One way we could do this, um, which is a very common way of doing it, is to make use of some of our um, snapping options. So as I'm drawing or moving the end point around ready to accept the next point, you can see that it's telling me some important information. It's telling me the length of the line if I was to click there and what the angle would be relative to the first point that I've put in. So actually I do want to have uh, something which is 27 inches long and uh, completely horizontal, i.e. an angle of zero. So I could just click at this point and that would place um, the the, um, the next point at the right location there snapped to my um, cursor. Uh, if you want to adjust the precision of the snapping you can change the zoom level so if, you're, if you zoom closer in you'll get uh, more uh, smaller increments of your snap uh, options there. But the other way to do it, just for completeness, would be to actually enter the values here. So that's the way I'm going to do it, just to show you that process. So I can say I want an angle of zero, and I want it to be 27 long, and add. And that just automatically adds to exactly the same point in. So those are the two methods that you can um, very precisely uh, draw your vector geometry. Uh, that's all we need. We just need one of these lines, because we're now going to copy that to make the other three. So if I right-click now, I shall close the tool and exit the um, polyline drawing. So with my single line here we want to make a, a pattern of copies up and the way I'm going to do that is to use another um, useful tool here which is to create a linear array of copies. So this will allow us to copy in uh, X, Y or a combination of X and Y. We want to just copy upwards here so it gives me a bit of information at the top, it tells me what my object size is. Now then what I want here is actually just one column. I don't want to have create a, 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 an array in both X and Y. I just want to create a column. So we just want one column but four rows of shapes from this. And I want to define them in terms of a gap between each of my um, lines. And in X there will be no gap because we're just moving them. We're just making a pattern up. And in Y I want a gap of uh, one inch between each line. Uh, and we can just click copy now and it creates my pattern. So what we've done here is created four rows from our, single, our starting line and each row is separated with a, with a gap of one inch. So that's quite a neat way of producing uh, precise artwork. And that's really the, the starting point to move on now and look at our fluting toolpath. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the creating of the toolpaths based on these uh, four lines that we've created. So we could just whiz across to the toolpaths tab here, pin it out, and then perhaps temporarily uh, unpin the drawing and the layers tabs on the left. But there's a simpler way of doing that automatically, which is to use this button to switch to the toolpaths tab. And that effectively um, just does those manual steps for us very quickly. So it unpins the drawing and layers tab and pins out the toolpaths tab so that we can focus on toolpathing. 
And now I'm going to select the fluting toolpath strategy from the toolpath operations set here. Uh, and because I've got these selected, they become highlighted here, and these uh, green markers indicate the start point. Now, for our fluting, this might be quite significant because, uh, as you'll see in a second, we can change the properties of our fluting toolpath to be different at the start and the end of each of the passes. Uh, so in this case, it, it's not going to be so significant, but make sure, if you're doing fluting, that you pay attention to where the start point of your um, geometry is and if you need to need to you might need to go back to drawing mode and uh, use the um, the options in drawing to move the star point to the correct end of your lines okay so in this case they're all going to start on the left and move to the right but as uh, as we go on we'll see we're going to make a symmetrical fluting toolpath anyway but we're going to start at the top here uh, the start depth the the, we're going to assume is the top of the material and therefore a depth of zero uh, but we're going to cut down to a maximum depth of quarter of an inch um, as it gets to the the long run of the the, uh, the flute and uh, I'm going to select a slightly bigger ball nose tool so I have a half inch ball nose tool here uh, if you don't have one of those in your database then you can use an, one of the existing ball nose definitions to copy and then modify to make the half inch version uh, and that's dealt with in, there's a, a separate tutorial on modifying the database and adding your own tools if you want to watch that. Okay, so with the half inch ball nose selected, I've got various options now for my fluting type. I can just simply ramp from the start depth down to the flute depth um, across the entire length, uh, which would produce a sort of sloping gradient along each line. I can just simply ramp in at the start and then uh, retract uh, at the end or in this case what we want to do is ramp at both the start and the end so we have the tool come in run the length and then um, come out nicely to put a flute on either end of our lines so I select the ramp at start and end and then we can define um, how long the ramp is going to be either in terms of a percentage of the length of my line which is useful if you've got lines which are variable lengths and you just want to have a sort of proportional uh, flute or in this case we know exactly how long our lines are and we can make our ramp length an exact um, real value so I'm going to say two inches uh, rather than use the percentage option so what's going to happen now is that the ramping process will occur over the first two inches and the last two inches of this line and then the ramp types either linear or smooth essentially means should the um, tool come in in a straight line and then form the bottom of the flute and then come out again at a straight line or should we use a gentle curve uh, to produce uh, a much smoother result and that's what we're going to do we're going to use a smooth ramp in and a smooth ramp out again uh, and that's it we just calculate that now and what I'm going to do is just I'm going to tile my views so that we can see uh, both together now I can either use the, the drawing tab here to tile my views like so or um, if I use the page up and page down keys on my keyboard, uh, that's the keyboard shortcut to tile my views as well. And that's handy because I can now see the 2D and the 3D views simultaneously. We get a feel for where the 3D toolpath has come from in terms of the 2D geometry we pass into that strategy. Okay, so with this uh, fluting toolpath selected, it's definitely selected, it's uh, in bold here, I can now preview the selected toolpath and we can see um, straight away that that's produced the effect we're after so we've dipped the tool in it's come in on a smooth curve over the first two inches of each of these lines it's gone down to a maximum depth of 0.25 quarter of an inch for the main run of the flute and then as it gets to within two inches of the end it starts a, a gentle uh, smooth um, exit ramp uh, up to the surface again and that produces the basic fluting toolpath so hopefully you can see that it's a pretty, um, hopefully a very straightforward toolpath to produce, um, but it's very fast and it can produce actually quite intricate uh, and pleasing shapes. Uh, there's a second um, example uh, which I will show you next uh, where we'll use the fluting toolpaths uh, in various forms to make a complete um, chopping board. In this example, we're going to use the fluting toolpath strategy in a very practical way to produce the main elements of a cutting board design. So this is the sort of thing that you might cut into wood or corian or solid surface. And the crucial thing we would like to add to our design is um, draining grooves down to a pocket here. Um, so what we 
we would like to do is cut these so that they get gradually deeper and come down to this pocket which would be the sort of collecting pocket at the end of the draining board or the cutting board. So we're going to use the fluting toolpath strategy for this and because the geometry has all been created for us already I'm going to cut straight across now to the toolpaths tab and focus on using this geometry to create the fluting toolpaths. So I switch across, it hides temporarily the drawing and the layers tab and pins out the toolpaths tab for us. And if I select the fluting toolpath strategy here, we can start to work through the options. So the first thing I want to do is select all of my shapes. So I'm going to hold down the shift key here and I can box select the grooves and I'm going to select the edges. Now the import, there's a couple of important things to note here. Firstly, notice that there's not a single boundary forming the uh, edge profile as you might have thought, but instead it's been cut in half with one uh, half running down this way, so the start point here running to the end point here, and the top half running symmetrically the other way, so the start point still on the left hand side and running round to the end here. And this is important because our fluting toolpath uh, is important to know where the start and the end point are, uh, uh, is, and we're going to run from one depth to another depth. Uh, so the, uh, the boundary here has been cut into two bits so that we can run both from um, shallow to deep. Um, around the edges of the board uh, and that's been used, that's the cutting tool uh, which is available in the uh, 2D drawing options. So that's one thing to note here that the boundary is actually made of two um, separate bit vectors and the other thing is if I box select the grooves here you'll see that one of them stands out immediately uh, and the green box here is showing us the start point of each of our vectors and we really need these to be consistent and it is important particularly in fluting uh, and so when the fluting toolpath uh, form is open it will highlight the start points of any of your selected vectors because so many of the options on fluting um, relate to the start or the end of the uh, geometry that you're using to create the toolpath and here you can see one of our toolpaths is going to be one of our grooves is going to be the wrong way around if we just ran this so all of these would start with the start values here and go down to the end value here and this one would start the other way and go back so uh, I want to show you how to correct that quickly so having spotted that that's going to be the case we need to select this um, uh, line in isolation and I'm going to press the node the N key on my keyboard to go to node editing mode and uh, my cursor changes to the node editing cursor now and if I roll over the other end the end we want to become the start and right click we get various options here including make start point so make start we could just simply click that and that would make that the start point but also in this right click uh, menu it indicates to us what the shortcut key is for the equivalent command and make start point um, is the P key so in fact, instead of selecting it from the menu just to demonstrate the other method of doing this I'm going to roll over the cursor with the mouse so it becomes the mouse changes to the node selection cursor so I know I'm over the right cursor and press P on the keyboard and that swaps uh, the start point to the one I was pointing at so that's great that's what we want to do now I'm going to right click to exit node editing mode and go back to selection mode and we're back in to the ability to select all of our lines. So that quickly allows you to correct any mistakes that you might have in terms of start points in your geometry without leaving the form. Okay, so now the start points are all lined up. Uh, we're, we can go ahead and start creating the toolpath. As with most forms in the software, we can start from the top of the form and work our way down to the bottom. And the information we provide is in a fairly logical order so that you can um, work through it progressively. So it starts at the top and let's look at the cutting depths. We want to define what the start uh, depth will be at the beginning of our cut and what the maximum depth of the flute will be, um, depending on which option we choose here, where that will be on the line will change, but it will come down to a maximum flute depth. Now I want to actually, rather than start on the surface and dip my tool from, from zero down into the, the job, I do want to start from a position actually already under the, the top of the surface to give us a nice rounded end to our drainage grooves here. So I'm going to set uh, 50 thousandths of an inch as the start depth. Now once I've done that it's worth noting that the maximum depth of cut we're now going to achieve in our flute is going to be the flute depth plus whatever start depth I'd put in. So we're actually going to cut now to a depth of 0.3 of an inch. So it's worth remembering that the total cut depth is going to be those two things combined. Uh, I've stuck with the ball nose, half inch ball nose here and this time we're just going to cut in a straight line from the start to the end of our flute so that means we're going to ramp over the complete length 
and we're going to do it in a straight line so the ramp type is linear as opposed to a smooth curve and that's it so we can just calculate that now and we can see already in the 3D view the results of our calculation it's very fast and it's quite a quick toolpath to cut as well I'm just going to tile the two views so that we can see our original artwork and the 3D results underneath um, and what uh, we can do now is just preview this selected toolpath using the preview toolpaths form here and we can see very quickly that that's produced the result we're after so hopefully you can see now why we had to split the boundary into two parts because we wanted to run it from shallow to deep round the top and shallow to deep round the bottom in a symmetrical way and we could only do that with two open lines uh, so we created the boundary and then cut it in half to make the two open lines running from left to right round the top and left to right round the bottom and then we've run each of the grooves down. So that's the main fluting part of this demonstration done. But just to finish off, I'm also going to put a pocket in here so that you can see um, the finished design. So this pocket's been created pretty much by uh, creating a bit of artwork that's offset out by a quarter of an inch. In other words, the radius of our tool, because we knew we were going to be cutting this boundary with a half inch ball nose. So to make the edges back, match up in the final toolpath I've offset the geometry out for the pockets by the radius of that tool uh, in other words quarter of an inch so there's a simple pocket let's grab that close this form down and we're going to go into the pocketing toolpath form here and I'm going to do a simple cut down I've set a third of an inch here because if you recall um, we've got a quarter of an inch flute but also a 50,000th start depth. If we weren't sure about that it's also worth noting down the bottom here that I'm highlighting with the mouse um, at any point as I move my mouse cursor over the 3D uh, preview it will tell me the X position, the Y position and the Z value for any point so I can actually examine uh, sort of interactively the state of my cut and I can see straight away that um, if I just about get the deepest point, if I can just about, but you can see that we are cutting down to pretty much 0 0.3. I had a 0.29, something like that. So if I can get into the deepest points of these pockets, you'll see that they're certainly coming down to deeper than the quarter of an inch we'd had as the flute depth. And uh, in fact, if I was to do this more accurately, uh, we would see that it's pretty much 0 0.3 at its deepest points. If I explore around there. There we go, 0.29. So that's a really useful way of just checking what depths you're expecting. Um, and it's completely interactive, so it's a nice way of exploring your preview as you go along. So we know it's going to be 0.3 uh, in order to, to meet the depths we've already cut. Now what I've got here, if I was to use just the ball nose, I do want to use a ball nose because I want the uh, edges of my pockets to nicely match the fluting that's coming in already uh, on this edge. But I don't really want to area clear a pocket with a rounded tool because I would have to use a tiny step over if I was going to get an acceptable surface finish and it's just a very inefficient way of cutting uh, what is really a flat bottomed uh, pocket. So what I can do is choose the main tool as being my half inch ball nose to match my fluting but then have this option selected to use a larger area clearance tool. So with the larger area clear clearance tool selected I can have a half inch end mill to do most of the um, the area, the material clearance out of my pocket, and will also produce a much better surface finish on the on the bottom edge or the bottom surface of my pocket. Uh, because of that, though, I'm going to leave a little pocket allowance here. So I'm going to allow uh, just twenty thousandths so that the ball nose can come and do the final clean up cut. Okay, and that's that's it. So I can uh, select that and. Um, create my pocket. The pocket's now created two toolpaths you can see here. One is the clearance which is using the uh, end mill. If I roll over it I can see it's an end mill and also the icon shows me that it's an end mill as opposed to a ball nose. But rolling over it gives me all the details of the tool associated with that toolpath in a pop-up um, tip. So here's my area clearance. Let's just run the area clearance first. Oops. Let's just run, actually click on it the area clearance first. Let's undo the last, in fact, which we can do. Preview the one that's selected. So previewing the selected toolpath as opposed to the visible toolpath is very important. The two things are different. So having selected it, I can preview it. And we can see there that's the main pocketing done. But we're just going to come back now and finish off with our ball nose. So select the ball nose now and preview that one. And that produces the final result. So let's just expand that we can take a look at it. Okay, so that's the, the finished sort of um, 
draining board or cutting board design using the flutes to give us nice little drainage grooves both around the border of the uh, cutting board and also these grooves down in the middle coming down to a nice little collection pocket at the far end. Hopefully that was an interesting tutorial.